All right. Well, welcome, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Today, we will be presenting how to save money and manage your IoT deployment more effectively as we showcase what's new at Tellit for everything across our product portfolio. This includes our IoT modules, IoT connectivity, and IoT platforms. I'm Krista Duty. I'm the head of IoT services marketing for Tellit, and I'll be your moderator today. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you think of any questions as we go along at any point along the presentation, please type them into the question pane of GoToWebinar, and we'll be having a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So a brief overview about Tellit. We're an end-to-end -end IoT solutions provider. With over 15 years experience, we've been at IoT since really before IoT was a term. We've had a global footprint with customers all over the world serving in every industry. We offer everything you need, whether it's hardware modules to connect your things, connectivity data plans to connect those things anywhere in the world, and software platforms to empower you to bring everything together in one place. We also offer our IoT know-how to consult you on any topic along your IoT journey. So just a quick look into our, our modules. We offer the broadest portfolio of cellular and non-cellular IoT modules in the industry. And as we all know, uh, technology updates, advancements, releases of emerging technology seem to be happening in a, in a blink of an eye. And this creates roadmap and design challenges for developers. Who, and they're really driven to keep costs down while remaining at the forefront of technology. So our approach is that we've developed a family of modules, which, which means, maintains a single form factor and software continuity that allows you to just drop in and replace a module with a range of technologies to choose from and update according to your needs. It's really as simple as that. Um, oh, sorry, one slide went forward. On our Telet IoT connectivity services side, we've designed SIMs and data plans specifically for your needs. We offer IoT SIM cards and custom data plans with roaming across different regions and networks around the world, all designed to improve performance and keep costs manageable for your IoT deployment. So the benefits of our connectivity services are numerous. You can enjoy 2G, 3G, and 4G LTE custom data plans for data, SMS, and voice on Tier 1 mobile networks. You don't have to have any fear of bill shock with simple terms from one agreement with predictable pricing and no hidden fees or roaming charges. And we offer 24-7 support from Telet's dedicated IoT experts so you can enjoy peace of mind knowing that we're available to help you around the clock. And lastly, our multi-layer security and VPN connections lets you feel confident about the security of your deployments. Last but not least are our IoT platforms. They make it easy to connect things to apps, integrating any device, production asset, or remote sensor with your web-based and mobile apps and enterprise systems. DeviceWise is our IoT platform, which powers both our cloud-based IoT portal subscription service and our factory on-premise industrial deployment solution. SecureWise is our platform that offers secure remote access to semiconductor equipment, which is the de facto standard for the industry. Many of our customers choose to start with our cloud-based subscription services via the portal because it's a pay-as-you-grow a system with little upfront investment that makes it easier than ever to onboard things to the cloud. And the portal gives you full access to all of Telet services, which includes all connectivity services, data and device management services, administration, security, and applications for your entire IoT deployment. So everything is easily controlled in a single intuitive web interface. So with that, we're going to jump into today's presentation. We're going to walk through our portfolio of products and learn about what's new here at Telet. Abi Oswath is going to start us off with updates on our IoT modules. So Abi, it's over to you. Thank you, Krista. Good day to all of you. Um, I'm Abi, and I'm the Director of Marketing for um, Non-Cellular IoT Modules. Telet offers a broad portfolio of IoT modules. I'll be talking about our uh, non-cellular modules. Telet announced a handful of new, new modules this quarter across all technologies from short range, low power wide area network, GNSS, and cellular, including high and low category LTE. Many of our products announced this quarter are industry first in collaboration with our leading IoT partners.
So what's new in Wi-Fi? In addition to releasing our Wi-Fi and only add-on modules this quarter, we announced the acquisition of Gainspan. Gainspan is a company that's based out of uh, Silicon Valley with a robust R&D center in Bangalore. GS2200M is a fully integrated ultra low power Wi-Fi module with an extremely small footprint that provides easy and a cost effective way to add wireless connectivity. It runs both IP and networking stack and has two ARM Cortex M3 processors. It supports both hosted and hostless solutions. In general, it offers a complete end-to-end -end production ready cloud integration solution. Some of the key functionality that we offer include over-the-air over firmware upgrade and multiple provisioning methods to enable easy connectivity. The module also supports very high throughput end-to-end -end solution with about 25 Mbps and it's ultra low power for IoT applications that include um, about 260 nano amps in hibernate modes uh, with extremely fast wake up at around 10 milliseconds. Uh, we also support uh, personal and enterprise security that is much needed for IoT applications. It has a mature software um, and we have over 6 million field deployments of these modules. It's very widely used for battery independent IoT devices including medical, industrial, smart home, audio video, healthcare and, uh, and others. The GS2101M is a small footprint module that provides a quick, easy and an effective way for customers to add low power Wi-Fi connectivity to their products. Intended for smart energy and sensor applications, the module has a 3 by 16 bit Sigma Delta ADCs for high resolution sensors and measurement devices. The GS2101M can be used in hostless mode or hosted mode where it can connect to uh, 8, 16 or 32 bit host controllers using UART, SPI or SDIO interfaces. Similar to the GS2200M, uh, the GS2101 runs the full, full Wi-Fi and TCP IP networking stacks and supports a complete suite of security protocols in hosted or hostless mode. The software Embedded platform includes host reference code, UART, SPI, SDIO drivers, and AT commands. It supports a full-blown HTTP server and client is running on the module. Support for JSON and CoAP uh, DTLS messaging formats, and also um, enterprise and personal security. Wi-Fi provisioning uh, supports both concurrent AP and stay modes with support for associated and unassociated modes. The last module that we are introducing um, in the Wi-Fi uh, portfolio is the WE866. This is an add-on module to the Telet cellular um, modules that provides a secure, powerful solution for customers looking for a simple and a fast way to include Wi-Fi 2.4G with a cellular backhaul. The WE866 is designed to be a companion module for Telet XE910 cellular modules supports multiple use cases including dual path where data can be sent to the Wi-Fi or cellular network separately. For hotspot where, where the Wi-Fi module broadcasts a local network for Wi-Fi clients to connect and send the data. With its small footprint and feature-rich network application stack, uh, WE866 makes it very, easy, very suitable for uh, security alarms, home automation, hubs, gateway and market verticals. Also noteworthy to mention is that the module has a full protocol TCP IP stack and powerful crypto engine to support 256-bit AES encryption and WPA personal and enterprise security. What's new in Bluetooth? We are excited to announce our latest addition to the Bluetooth module family, uh, that is Bluemart S50. Telet introduced the industry's first advanced single-mode Bluetooth 5 module this quarter. This is a very exciting time for the Bluetooth market in general as the Bluetooth 5 standard delivers three new technical capabilities. One, 4x range compared to Bluetooth 4. Two, two times the, um, the speed and increased broadcast capacity. 
The Bluemont S50 delivers a host of benefits. Longer range with, will bring more coverage. Our current line of sight coverage is around 850 meters. Faster data rates translate to throughput of 2 Mbps. Finally, increasing the broadcast capacity um, will translate in advertising extensions leading to a more intelligent beaconing and navigation applications. Higher data rate implies faster data logging and diagnostics and faster firmware upgrades. As an example for medical biometrics applications, the higher data rate allows for exchange of more data that can help for biometric authorization systems and security key and certificate exchanges. The Bluemont S50 applications range from home automation, healthcare, medical, industrial, IoT hubs, gateway, security beacon, and asset tracking. Low power wide area network is a type of wireless communication um, uh, network designed to allow long range communications at a low bit rate among things. LoRa has picked up steam and is being widely deployed. We are excited to introduce RE866 that addresses a number of use cases for long range applications. RE866 is, is our latest innovative offering to support non-cellular connectivity. It is a combination of BLE5, NFC, and LoRa. Certified for LoRaWAN 1.02 Class A, Class C, and BT5. LoRa provides ultimate long-range high-capacity solutions for IoT and MTM networks. Long-range implies the solution can be designed to receive data for nodes from 2 to 5 kilometers in dense urban and 15 kilometers in sub suburban. With LoRa, one can create long-range star network that is multi-tenant and centrally managed. This is easy to deploy, maintain, reduces the cost of infrastructure, optimizes battery lifetime, and similar to existing cellular networks. Bluetooth 5 integrated in the module can further aggregate and transmit data from other BLE devices and sensors over long-range LoRaWAN network. The module is pin-to-pin -pin compatible with NB IoT module and complements existing M2M networks that connects thousands of nodes. Applications can range from public or private networks, smart metering, industrial automation, security and alarm, agriculture, asset tracking, street lighting, smart cities, and many more. The RE866 is regional specific due to the 868 MHz ISM band and is applicable for deployments in Europe, Africa, and UAE. Our GNSS product portfolio is the result of over 20 years of experience in GNSS applications. SE868 SE and SL876Q6 are our newest additions to GNSS product family. We introduced SE868 KX series during the Embedded World Conference, which took place in March. Customers were asking for a compact footprint that included a patch antenna based off of our popular 11x11M SE868A GNSS antenna modules. These enhanced variants are complete multi-constellation GNSS or dual constellation GPS receivers, which include a 9x9MM patch antenna, soft filter, flash memory, GNSS core, RTC and TS, uh, TCXO in addition to an LNA to increase the RF sensitivity. The SE868 series is available in two form factors, with standard antenna and with a low profile antenna. We offered a sneak peek of the turnkey SL876Q5 module at Mobile World Congress. Although additional details will be released this quarter, we can tell you that this solution is ideal for developers with little or no RF design experience and for projects requiring option for second or external antennas. Not only does the low power compact footprint deliver superior performance and quality at a low cost, it includes a comprehensive feature set that eliminates the need for additional components, which are desirable for IoT projects with size, cost, and time constraints. With that, I would like to hand it over to uh, Marco to talk about our uh, exciting cellular LTEM and NB-IoT products. Thank you, Abhi. 
My name is uh, Marco Argenton and I will uh, guide you through the cellular offering, in particular the latest news uh, from Q1 this year. So let's start with the ME910 uh, C1 uh, series. This is uh, an LTE CATM variant of the well-known uh, 910 series with uh, an optional GNSS Quad Constellation GNSS uh, receiver. And it is a product uh, optimized for uh, an efficient power consumption and uh, uh, an extended coverage. Actually, here we are uh, presenting uh, two variants, one for the North American region that is uh, supporting uh, the CATM1 uh, technology and actually available into two variants, one for Verizon supporting band 4 and band 13 and one for AT&T supporting band 2, 4 and 12. Uh, this is actually a product that we introduced uh, in Q4 last year enabling uh, our key customers in uh, US uh, with the two major operators that uh, are here uh, mentioned and uh, uh, we continued to uh, to work on it uh, uh, also um, achieving uh, the first certifications uh, from uh, the two operators. The module is also available in a variant for the EMEA market and as you can notice in this slide uh, this is a dual mode so it's not only CATM1 but it will be available also with the possibility to support narrowband IoT that together with M1 is the new standard defined with the 3GPP release 13. With this M1 series we are able to provide samples now and in the next slide I will talk about the dedicated narrowband IoT solution. As I said, this is a low-cost, ultra-low power uh, solution implementing all the latest features according to the 3GPP standards. And it also simplifies the development uh, of the applications of our partners because uh, it uh, will uh, support also the well-known uh, TELIT Upson C environment in order to embed the application into the modem getting rid of an external host processor. It is suitable for um, indoor environments uh, with applications such as uh, metering, smart cities, sensors, health monitors, and, and so on. Everything that is uh, requiring a low data rate and an extended coverage. So this is a very versatile and, and good solution for all these uh, use cases. The NE910 C1 series uh, that I mentioned before uh, further enriches the widely deployed 910 family and uh, it is implementing uh, a pure narrowband IoT solution. So this is in particular uh, suitable for the EMEA market because uh, as you might know already in uh, this area we have uh, a priority from some operators in the deployment of narrowband IoT. It is a dual band solution, band 8 and band 20, with all the same interfaces uh, that uh, are available on the 910 form factor. So we are keeping this concept of a unique uh, size and unique interface from an hardware and software point of view. So customers can leverage designs that, for example, today could be based on a GSM technology and have a drop-in replacement and an easy migration path to narrowband IoT. In these cases, samples will be available in, uh, in Q3 this year with mass production in, in uh, Q4. Here instead I will uh, tell you about our um, smallest solution that is called NE866. This is a 15 by 19 uh, LGA module and uh, it is a dual band uh, also in this case band 8 and band 20 configuration that is suitable for most of the European carriers such as Vodafone, Deutsche Telekom, Telenor and many others plus uh, China Mobile and other uh, MNOs in uh, Asia Pacific. Of course uh, being uh, uh, compatible with the 3GPP release uh, 13 it is uh, implementing uh, the possibility to have an extended coverage 
up to uh, 20 dB in maximum coupling loss for better reach in deep indoor environments. And of course, uh, it is a low cost and ultra low power uh, solution. That is exactly the use case that this technology narrowband IoT uh, is going to address. Also in this case, we have the opportunity, the possibility to uh, provide samples now and then going through certifications, of course, according to the new European Directive RED, and then through GCF and the major carrier approvals. CCC instead is the uh, Chinese regulatory certification. As I said, this is a product that could be used also in this uh, uh, market. Another important feature uh, that is a key differentiator in the market uh, that we can offer with this NE866 is the optional onboard EUICC. That is the embedded SIM chip as a mounting option inside the module. So uh, instead of uh, uh, finding a place to uh, have a SIM card on the uh, final application, we can offer this possibility of having connectivity and uh, module together in one piece. On the same form factor, we have also the ME866. This is a 15 by 25 uh, uh, LGA module. If you design uh, uh, for the ME866, you can of course mount also the NE866 that I presented before. And uh, this is um, the natural migration from the existing uh, CAT1 offering that we have on the same four factor, in particular for the North American market, to the CATM uh, technology. So just to summarize, uh, at the real beginning I presented the ME910, that is a uh, LTM technology on the 910 form factor. This is LT CAT M1 on the 866 form factor. Also in this case available for Verizon band 4 and band 13 and for AT&T band 2, 4 and 12. This is a product that we are already designing and that will be available for customers integrations in the second half of this year. So this was the overview on the uh, real latest uh, technology according to 3GPP release 13. Let me tell you something on uh, our current uh, LT and CAT1 and CAT4 products that we have in uh, mass production. So this is not really uh, news from Q1, but this is a product that we have introduced last year, certified with all the major uh, operators worldwide uh, and currently available in mass production. Just to uh, summarize or describe for those of you that uh, do not know tell it yet, uh, we have a variant for uh, Verizon, uh, band 2, 4 and 13 for AT&T, also for Entity Docomo that is really the, the real news of Q1 because we have achieved uh, the uh, operator certification in Japan with this new variant in CAT1 and also a variant for the EMEA market with a pentaband solution that also has a fallback to 2G. If you notice the interfaces are exactly the same that I presented before for the 910 uh, series. The real news here is that uh, we are working on the maintenance releases so on top of the mass production that is running we are doing the certification starting from the North American market uh, and operators Verizon and AT&T with a new software release uh, and the major uh, news uh, that we are bringing with this uh, release is the Volti support, so voice over LTE. The same is valid for the Alien N10 V2 series uh, that is an LTE CAT4. And uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, as well Verizon and AT&T and a European variant. But we have also a variant for Telstra, so Australia, band 3, band 7, and the uh, well-known band 28, 700 megahertz. And also in this case, uh, we are going through maintenance release certification process right now in order to add uh, Volti support. 
this is a product that is uh, well mature. It is uh, implementing uh, all the features and the extended uh, AT commands that you can find in all the TELIT portfolio from 2G to 3G and legacy 4G technology. You have the possibility to use TELIT AppZone. You have also the embedded uh, device-wise uh, agent in order to have a module that is uh, uh, natively um, ready to be connected to the cloud. Few words on the certifications that we uh, received in Q1. Uh, we have obtained a certification from AT&T and GMA, that is the consortium made by uh, T-Mobile, Orange, Telia and Tim. On the 3G maintenance release 1208, that is the new soft release that we have in production right now, for all the variants, dual band, tri band or penta band, uh, that are um, available in our offering uh, with the products UIN N10 and HIN N10. As I said before, we have achieved uh, the uh, MNO approval in Japan with uh, Entity Docomo. And we have been uh, the first to get uh, in US the first approvals with the latest technology, with Verizon for the ME910 C1 NV, and with AT&T with the ME910 C1 NA. We also got uh, a T-Mobile approval end of last year with our smart module 3G uh, combo with Wi-Fi HE922. We showcased many of these new additions with our partners at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona this year, including LTM with Qualcomm and Narrowband IoT with Ericsson, Nokia and Telefonica. One highlight from the quarter includes the industry's first successful end-to-end -end narrowband IoT test call with partners Ericsson, Telefonica and Tele. For example, together with our ecosystem of technology, partners and customers, Telit realized six deployment ready sensors to cloud demos showcasing narrowband IoT applications on a live network. For example, a manhole monitor, a car detector for smart parking, a personal tracker, a CO2 sensor, or a gas tank monitoring of all which leverage the benefits of narrowband IoT, such as low battery power, low data rates, extended coverage, and pure data-only applications with a fixed installation. With that, I have completed the cellular part, and I'm handing over to Elad. Thank you very much, Marco. And uh, hello everyone and thanks again for joining. My name is Elad Aroni and I'm the Connectivity Product Manager in Telit. I will present two items, the Connectivity Dashboards, which we launched recently as part of uh, Telit's uh, uh, CDP solution in the IoT portal, and uh, uh, a very attractive offering, the Pan America offering, uh, uh, that suits a specific use case in North America. So let's start with the connectivity dashboards. So before diving in, uh, uh, seeing is believing. So this is the main view of the connectivity dashboard. It is comprised of different views. And the idea is that in one glance, it provides you the main insights of your deployment. And later I will get in and dive into each one of the, of the view here, of the views. But the idea is that one quick look, you realize what's the status of your deployment. So why, why do we need this, uh, uh, the connectivity dashboard? So, so when manage, managing the connectivity in your organization, you wish to quickly get answers uh, to these questions that you see here. So how many of my devices are active? Is the data consumption of my deployment normal? Are my devices located where I expect them to be located? Are my devices acting abnormally? Which ones don't active uh, uh, normally? And finally, what's happening right now? Is everything okay? And uh, we find that getting these answers fast is becoming 
increasingly more challenging as the deployment scales grows in both in a, a size of the deployment and the data consumption. And this is why we need the connectivity dashboards. So a, a quick overview. So uh, the, the, our solution enables you to get quick insights on the various aspects of the global deployment and, and the global deployment. So what's the deployment status, what is the usage, location, roaming, high runners, and if you realize that further investigation is required, so you can drill down to each one of the specific views. And if you wish to know uh, how is my deployment performing right now, we also added the real-time views. It's a, a five-minute resolution, uh, and, and it's uh, in, in near real time, it's uh, uh, delayed in, in five minutes, which is uh, uh, very challenging and, and unique. So let, let's, dive, let's dive in. This is the main view and what can we see here? So I will review now each one of the, of the views here. So deployment status, how many devices are in your deployment? How many are activated? and how many are in session right now. And we added a, a pie chart with the different carriers because uh, uh, some of us uh, uh, manage few uh, 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 connection SIM cards from different carriers and, and, and tell its uh, uh, solution. You can see all of your uh, uh, devices, all of your SIM cards from uh, uh, one place. Usage. So you can see the data, sessions, and SMS trend in the last 14 days. So the idea is to have a quick look at the trend and realize if the usage is, is normal. So usually you come, you just take a quick glance, okay, the, the, the trend seems normal, everything is okay. But if you think, if you see that the trend is something just jump or, or it doesn't look no, normal, if, uh, if required, you can drill down location, so the map on the bottom left. So on a map, you can see the last known location of each one of your uh, uh, devices. And if you, we will drill down later, you can see, uh, you can zoom in to each one of the devices. So uh, suppose you, you see uh, here that there is a device located in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Antarctica. So you realize that, that something is, uh, is wrong. So now you can zoom in and, and look for that specific uh, uh, device. Roaming. So roaming uh, uh, data per country in the last 30 days is presented. So you quickly can realize if this is a normal situation since you're familiar with the countries that uh, uh, your SIMs are, are deployed in. So and, and if something seems uh, uh, unnormal, you can, we will drill, drill down to the specific view later and the high runners view. So uh, these are the devices which consume the most data, SMS, and more. Uh, uh, these are specific devices and, uh, and uh, uh, that, are, that need your attention. These are the high runners. And by the way, you can see that you can uh, switch the uh, time period between a day, week, or month. Let's drill down to each one of the views now. So, the deployment status, you can see the total devices and how many are activated, how many are currently in session, and as I mentioned before, the distribution of the different carriers. So, from, one, from Telit's IoT platform, you can see all the carriers in one place. So, you don't have, if you have a, a SIM card from AT&T, and from Telefonica, you don't have to uh, manage those SIM cards from, uh, uh, from two different platforms. Uh, the, in the IoT portal, you can see all of your deployments in one place. Usage. So, usage uh, uh, data sessions, uh, uh, total data, data sessions, which is also very important, and SMSs. So you can, you can switch the time period. So this is a, a seven days, one week, but you can also switch to 
a, a, a monthly usage or, or, or look or a daily view depends if you want to to drill down to to something more specific so the map view allows you to zoom in to each one of the devices you can zoom in and and see exactly the location and the address of the specific device where it is located the roaming view presents the data that consumes on country level and carriers so on the top is data per each one of the countries and on and the the bottom uh, graph uh, presents the data per carrier, all the different carriers. So you, you always see roaming can be very tricky. So and and it can cause a, a, a excessive costs. So uh, you should always pay attention. Make sure that uh, 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 that 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 you are roaming on 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 the expected uh, carriers. And in the high runners views, you can see uh, uh, your high uh, offender devices. So these are the devices that create the most data, SMS, data sessions, and zero sessions. Zero sessions on the bottom right. So what's, what's a, a zero session? We mark a zero session when a device is uh, connecting to the data network. It opens a PDB context, but it does not transfer any data. So this can uh, 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 might indicate that there's a, a problem, either with the device, uh, the application, or maybe even there's a, a network issue, because this is a, a in, inefficient uh, uh, way or the device is working, connected to the data network, open a PDP, but doesn't transmit anything. And finally, there are real-time views. The real-time views enable you to see the performance of your deployment right now. Suppose you suspect there is a specific issue, you think something doesn't work, you, you can you, you, you look at the, at the, at the real-time view and you see what's happening right now. And if you realize that there is a, a, uh, an issue, um, you, you can uh, uh, go and, and, and try to fix it and see again if the, if the uh, if, if performance is, is back to normal, what you can see is here in these views is the, is the data traffic, the open data sessions, and roaming information, data per country and data per carrier. So using, using the, uh, the connectivity, the, the real-time views, uh, you can easily understand if there is a problem right now and, and if there is an action was taken, you can immediately uh, close the loop and see if, it, if uh, the problem was resolved. So to summarize the connectivity dashboard, so the goal of the, of the dashboard is to be able to realize the deployment status very fast, quickly, and if further investigation is required, you can always, there's an option to drill down and get some more useful information. And the real-time views provide you insights what's happening right now in real time. So very powerful, very effective, very visual. It, it, it's, a very, it's a very unique, especially the, the, the real time. Okay, so that was the connectivity dashboards, and, and I will continue here to the Pan America offering. I will present a specific connectivity offering that we propose in the North America market, where the, the, the major strength of the, uh, of the offering is that it is simple and affordable. Simple is the, uh, is the main strength. So what's the use case? Suppose a fleet management trucks moving assets are moving between U USA, Canada, and Mexico. So they are just crossing the borders. So it, 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 this may vary because uh, uh, trucks move between US and Canada 
and uh, one month, and for the next few months they move, uh, they they do the route of, of both borders, US, Canada, and Mexico. So things may, may vary, and usually there are different costs for different countries and operators, and it becomes a real uh, burden to manage and monitor the usage. And, and this is where uh, uh, this specific uh, uh, proposal, uh, this offering uh, is, is, uh, is kicking in. So this is the use case, a moving asset between US, Ca US, Canada, and Mexico. The offering characteristics, so the offering is uh, uh, based on a roaming solution, so you can gain the advantage of multiple operators uh, that are available, and, uh, and this way increase serviceability, which is specifically, uh, uh, has a, a great value in the, in our, uh, in a, the IoT business, where there's a machine uh, uh, behind the, the, the connection. Simple pricing, flat price, pulled bundle, all the connectivity management solutions that we offer as part of the IoT portal, I will not get into details, but they are available, and standard access services such as APN and VPN are available, and, and the, again, the idea, it is simple and it is affordable. The footprint, so it's a roaming solution, multiple operators are available in each one of the countries, Canada, USA, and Mexico, and which makes it uh, optimal for uh, uh, M2M solutions. And the Optimus, our Optimus solution, so there are practically two offerings, we break it to two offerings, USA and Canada, well, first one, USA, Canada and Mexico, the second one, to add the flexibility, so two offerings. You don't need to predict the average usage and to select each to select the specific bundle for each scene, we will do it automatically. We will automatically allocate the optimized offering and the optimized bundle. So for example, if one month the device did not visit Mexico, it's just going from the US to, to, the, to Canada, and it consumed, I don't know, two megabytes that month, so uh, we will allocate USA and Canada, two megabyte bundle. Next month, suppose the device visited also Mexico and it consumed 100 kilobyte only, so no problem, automatically we'll allocate USA, Canada, and Mexico offering, 100 kilobyte bundle will be allocated. So the idea is that uh, uh, we want to remove all operation hassle from your shoulders and to avoid the bill shock. So this way it, it simplifies the, the, the solution and, and, and and no need to do anything from your side. We autom automatically allocate the correct offering and the optimized bundle, so uh, we don't have any overage. So, before I, I pass it to Bill, so in summary, the PAN offering, the PAN America offering is designed for a moving asset in, in North America, flat price, automatic bundle, allocation, just keep it simple. This is our motto. That's it for me, and uh, Bill, please go ahead. Thank you a lot. Uh, good day, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Dykus. I'm the Telet IoT Platform Product Manager. Today, uh, I'm going to give you a quick update on some of the items that we've uh, added and enhanced in the, uh, the Telet Platform, which includes uh, is made up of two items here, both our software gateways that, that run at the edge and our software as a service portal that, that op, we operate in, in the cloud. Um, first, I'm gonna talk about some of our new device connections specific to our, uh, our software gateways, uh, and then also uh, how we've added some other new sensors and uh, pre-integrated uh, pre uh, cloud connectors so that enable, uh, in particular, the Libellium platform to connect to our uh, to our cloud platform. So real, real quickly, I, I do want to point out, you know, what it, what it looks like from a, a use case perspective. Uh, our, while um, some vendors uh, connect from the cloud to the edge, 
we have specific software that runs on industrial routers and cellular routers at the edge. For example, you know, what are called gateways. And our, our edge logic software enables us to control the amounts of data, uh, identify trends very, very quickly, and also control and reduce the amount of data sent up to the cloud uh, for use uh, in, in other applications. But as you can see, in, in this particular application, which is a cooking logistics and, and, and restaurant supply, uh, cooking oil and frying equipment uh, data is collected. In this particular case, it's using a cellular router, excuse me, cellular router. And that data is sent up to the clouds. It could be using our modules. It could be using our connectivity and our, and our platform and really leverages our, our know-how. And we're able to integrate that data into a wide range of uh, either custom or, or, or known enterprise uh, applications. So, the, the, you know, real quickly, our, our, the Cypress CTM is a new platform. And so when we announce a, a new software gateway uh, integration. Uh, and if you really want to see our full range of lists, I, I encourage you to go out to help.devicewise.com uh, where we list all of our uh, integrated platforms and, and devices that we've actually uh, connected with that we can collect data from at the edge and, and publish into the enterprise for full integration. In particular, the Cypress CTM is a low cost gateway that provides a a great uh, value for um, for industrial and, and, and other environments. You can see there's optional, in addition to the cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, there is the option of uh, Iridium satellite, and there's some key standard features enabled to integrate into vehicle and industrial products, everything and from the CAN bus for engine and vehicle diagnostics to uh, an integrated accelerometer. So it's a great compact product that enables us to uh, and our clients to quickly, in a low-cost way, uh, uh, have access to collect data and, and ship it off to the platform. Next, for industrial environments, we've recently completed the, the Cisco IE4000, which is an internet ethernet switch that um, fits into uh, large industrial environments and manufacturers and processes, enables, and uh, enables the exchange of operating data from whether it be from uh, factory automation equipment, process control systems, or, or, or other, uh, whatever type of equipment that uh, can be connected and data collected to. Our, uh, again, the asset gateway operates on this end to manage and watch data, both from a, a, an immediate um, process control or process uh, monitoring situation to send that data up to quality or predictive maintenance applications that could be running um, off the factory floor. Another low-cost uh, product is uh, the Calon 5030. In fact, it uses a, uh, a telecellular module, for, uh, in, in this case for 3G. Uh, again, low-cost enables, uh, enables the, uh, the, the clients to, to install in uh, many different environments. And in fact, this is used in uh, uh, tens of thousands of locations, um, or will be used in tens of thousands of, of locations. I want to move on to the Libellium Cloud Connector. Libellium is a tremendous product. Their Meshlium Linux router, which is, enables the connection to a wide range of device, uh, devices from Zigbee to LoRa. Uh, you know, they have specific, uh, what they call WASMOT nodes that collect data, um, either locally or uh, in a fairly long distance mode. Uh, we have Wi-Fi. It, it's a very powerful, powerful um, gateway that we've, actually connected to the cloud through our, a specific cloud connector uh, and, and uh, it, you know enables the collection of data from the devices either through those, those protocols listed there and it can be the transfer over ethernet or wi-fi or, or 3g to uh, into the uh, world through the world wide web and into the telet device wise platform and once that happens Here's an example uh, uh, picture of it. Once that data is collected, whether it be from WASP modes or, or other predefined um, multi-protocol devices, uh, the Meshlium gateway pumps that data into the cloud and we're able to then manage it either through a, a data in transit or data at rest model, which, which means we either pass the data directly through to the enterprise application or we hold it in, um, in the cloud in our uh, 
predefined storage that enables clients to write their own management portals and dashboards. Otherwise, it's, it's put into well-known uh, enterprise uh, applications that might be running on SAP, IBM, Oracle, et cetera. So let me jump into the portal side and I'll give you a, a, quick, a quick update. Uh, we launched last year our, our new cloud logic. So while our edge products, our edge software, had a, a wide range of what we call triggers and, and uh, event logic that you can be built from our, our workbench, we added that same sort of uh, event and action logic, sort of if-then uh, statements through a Multi, what we call multi-action sequential triggers, we enable branching logic. So you can start with a singular event and have multiple multiple actions take place on the data, whether it be a map expression or arrays or uh, just a wide range of things. And I'll, I'll, go, I'll show you what we launched with and, and also sort of discuss the items that we've added over the course of time. We will continue to um, add more events and more actions to our cloud our cloud system so that you can build complex logic to manage the data as it passes through or passes into um, the Telet portal. And again, we have a similar to what we operate on our, our edge software, the gateway software, we have a, a built-in device-wise workbench, uh, our development canvas in the cloud that enables you to build logic through the events and actions uh, and, and create very uh, useful and very um, complex uh, logic to publish data, manage data, and, and push it into other locations. So today, is when, we, when we launched, we launched with a very specific set of events, meaning either alarm changes or geofence changes, location changes, uh, all, all sorts of things that, that trigger, actually trigger an event or is triggered by some sort of event, and then a series of actions that we can apply against it, whether that be publish the, the event either into as an alarm or publish it into a, a big query like Google or send an email, et cetera. We have a wide range of things uh, that we launch with, and, and as I said, we've also added some specific trigger enhancements uh, this, this, uh, this spring, including uh, items that support more data manipulation options, options excuse me, whether that's um, adding JSON parsers, uh, SMS receipts, published MQTT, just a, and iterating data over an array. Uh, one very important uh, uh, action that we initiated was uh, um, we are able to publish directly from our cloud into a, a number of third-party um, uh, other other cloud platforms, which in the, which has included Google, but we recently added publication directly to the Azure Event Hub connector. So in, instead of having to write special uh, interfaces, we actually have already created the Azure Event Hub Send, which enables us to publish the data directly into uh, into Azure for use um, in whatever enterprise data processing capability that you want. Uh, that's it for uh, the portal and the gateway right now. I'm going to pass it back to Krista. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. Well, before we get into our Q&A session, I just want to take a moment to mention our Tellet IoT University. It offers five-day classes that quickly give you a good foundation for IoT and using our platforms. People always walk away saying how blown away they are by the product and that they have so many ideas that they can start implementing when they get back to their jobs. And the university is a part of our IoT know-how. We have 12 different areas where we can help you at every point of your industrial IoT deployment. So you can find out more details on our website. So with that, let's get going on our Q&A session. During our Q&A session, you can raise your hand over in the GoToWebinar pane to request a personalized demo of any of the features or the products that you want to see, or if you want to have questions, you really want to get into it, raise your hand. We will get back to you. Um, you can also call the number on the screen to get directly in touch with us. I'm going to start asking the panelists some of the questions we have coming in. We have a few minutes here to get through these, and if we don't get to your question, because we do have a few, I think it's a little bit more than we can get to, we will make sure that someone follows up with you afterwards. Um, 
Let's start with this. This one might be a simple one. So is Telet going to do a Sigfox module, Marco or Abhi? Um, at Telet, we already have a Sigfox module. Uh, that is LE51868S. Uh, we do have other modules um, that are capable of Sigfox certification. Um, that includes LE17915 for the American markets. Um, and um, uh, we look forward to working with uh, our partners to, to, to build platforms and applications uh, necessary. All right, thanks. Uh, Elad, this one's to you. How does the connectivity dashboard get the data from the various carriers? Well, from the various carriers, um, we are connected to each one of those carriers and uh, and we get information from them. We're just connected to their platforms, to each one of the carriers. So instead of of uh, uh, of you have to go and and use each one of the carriers' uh, portals or management system, um, you just we integrated all of those carriers to one place. So you can so the IoT portal is the gateway. You just see everything from the IoT portal. All right, thanks. Um, let's see. This is a, I got a couple questions on the RE866 module, so I think this goes to you, Abhi. Looks like there's plenty of ports, the UART, SPI, GPIO, and it looks like that that inside is MCU. Could be? Can you be so kind to let me know what time, what type of MCU core it is? Um, right now we are um, uh, we are using the Semtech uh, module and um, we have a very unique and an innovative architecture. This is a tri-combo solution. So we are able to leverage the processing power for, um, for our tri-combo uh, solution itself um, and we don't need a separate MCU per se. Okay. And he also wants to know if the module can be configured as a modem. It, meaning if a customer can drive this module via AT commands without programming the module, uh, I think he means for instance, he got equal, for example, the module contains lower protocol and can communicate through UA, UA, UART, SPI, I2C. Yes. Um, uh, the answer is yes. You can program the module via AT commands and you can also provision it via the Bluetooth. And uh, we will shortly have the hardware user guide and the software user guide up and available on our uh, website. And you can take a look at it for further details. Okay. Um, let's see. Marco, I think this one will go to you. What, what about GSM fallback in EMEA? Someone is saying that it would be good to have it for both LTM and NB IoT, narrow, narrowbound IoT. Yes, this is a good uh, this is a good question, and uh, it is in line with what we are um, hearing from our partners, uh, both customers and operators. I didn't uh, present uh, in my slides today um, the specific variant because it was a webinar for the, the news in Q1, but actually we are already in Q2, and I can tell you that uh, for the ME910 C1, uh, that is a dual mode uh, product uh, supporting both M1 and Neuroband IoT, we have a variant that is the E2 version uh, that uh, you can see also in the data sheet on the, on the website that is uh, going to support uh, also the GSM fallback. This is something in particular useful for the uh, European region because uh, uh, you might have uh, seen already AT&T and Verizon in US announcing uh, nationwide global coverage. So both the variants for them uh, are not uh, uh, requiring any fallback. But uh, uh, on the other side of the ocean, uh, in Europe, uh, we might have uh, um, a need for a GSM fallback uh, in order to have a good coverage. So yes, sir, this is uh, it's a good feature. Uh, this is a request, uh, and this is something that we are already designing. Okay, thanks, Marco. 
I'm going to take one last question, and the rest of the questions we will get back to you. Um, we have your emails and everything. We'll get back to you and have someone get back to you. Last question, um, this one's for Bill. With the Azure Event Hub Connector, does that require the Azure IoT components to be operating? Uh, no, it goes directly into the Azure uh, Event Hub instead of going into the IoT Hub. And I also neglected to mention before that uh, in addition to uh, Azure and um, in addition to Azure and, uh, and and Google, we also publish directly into uh, AWS Kinesis, and uh, uh, we'll be doing it for uh, Watson uh, IoT. All right. Well, great. Thank you, everyone, for your time and attendance today. We hope you enjoyed the webinar. We will be getting back to those asked questions, and have a great day.